Hey guys, welcome back. It's that time again. <laughs> it's that glowing hour glow. If you're watching this on YouTube or on Spotify, yes, this is our second drink of the day. Oh, yes. Um, but to be fair, we didn't finish the first one and we used part we of it. our drink. In this one. Um, no idea if this is going to taste good. We kind of just like made, a, made it up. Made it up. It's tequila, lemon, kombucha, and mango. And we garnished it with lavender because why the fuck not? Because it's cute. Anyway, I'm out of mango. That's odd. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that I love this. I don't know that we killed it on this one. Today's topic, we are kind of going on theme with the whole buying a house situation and yeah. talking about the theme overall of adulting, whether... Whether you have a house or you don't. Uh, still doing it. You're still trying to figure out how to be an adult. Lots lots to lots to uncover there. Lots of this is I, gonna feel like a therapy session, I feel. I think it's just a big sigh. Everyone let out a really big sigh. Ready to take a breath in. Ugh. Yeah, it was America. Okay. That felt better. I just think there's a lot that goes into adulting that no one is ever prepared for. And you know what? I'm going to be that bitch right now. And I'm going to bring up a reality TV show that I'm watching. Here we go. Get your drinks ready. (laughs) So my mom randomly will get hooked on these really one-off shows. And I make fun of her, but then I get invested. Uh So this one's called Welcome to Plathville. (laughs) Or something like that. And it's basically this family. It's on TLC. Yeah. Of um, course. Yes. Yeah, I think so. Or TLC is Yeah, the- TLC. Um, it's giving the Duggars, 19 Kids and Counting, combined with, like, all the other TLC shows, you know? It's basically this family where their kids are really sheltered. They're homeschooled. They are conservative. They're religious. But, like, the show is interesting in a lot of ways, <laughs> which is why I'm so invested. But the point I'm bringing it up, I'm not going to get into the whole show because it's just too much here. (laughs) But the reason I'm bringing it up is because these kids are turning 18 and now they're like, what the fuck is the real world? Like, my parents never prepared me for this. Yeah. Uh, All about the sheltering and, like, protecting your kids to a degree. But, like, you got to throw your kids into the deep end every once in a while. Not, you know, figuratively. Yeah, well, I feel like if you don't do that, then when time comes to it, like... We can't shelter them forever. They're also going to be, like, lost as fuck. And that's exactly what this show is, like, kind of showing. Because the mom knew... It's only she raised them, like, Amish, you know? And it was like, you're never going to leave this lifestyle. Mm -hmm. It's like, no. Yeah. It's till you're 18, then it is what it is. Like, then my kids are going to want to go to college. Like, she's accepted. Like, yeah, my kids will probably want to go to college or, like... Which she's like, that's cool. But then it's also like when she talks about the good old days. Like when she's like, oh, me and your, me and dad, you know. She's like, don't tell anyone this, but four of my ex-boyfriends were at our wedding. And I'm like, <laughs> girl, the tea, the, the tea. The piping hot tea. And she just is like, you know, I just don't want my daughters and, you know, children to go through what I've got. It's just like this whole thing. And I'm like, girl, they're going to adult at some point. Like you can't. It's inevitable. Like. Yeah. For also, like, I think like. I mean, I think about, uh, like, our parents. I'm sure they, like, felt some type of way of, like, not wanting us to go through any hardship. Wasn't allowed to go to parties, you know? But you're, like... But I still did I'm it, didn't I? fuck up. <laughs> like, it, you... It's just part of the human experience, which is shitty because you want to protect your kids from anything bad or mean people or bad ideas, bad influences, or just things that are, like, in general bad for them, like soda or whatever. Mm-hmm. But it's, like... Okay, they're going to get tempted or be introduced to these ideas at some point instead of teaching them Not, nothing about Yeah, nothing, like either ignoring it or mm-hmm. teaching them that it's just bad. Yeah, it's not realistic. It's not realistic. You're not going to really, I don't know, when you, I feel like I when I think back on like the first times that like I drank or like certain things came into my like life, life I knew that they were bad, quote unquote, like from like what my mother would think or my dad would think. But, like, 
You still do them? You're like, I know mom's going to be disappointed if she finds out, but the point is she won't. (laughs) Like, I... Not that my mom should know, like, about psychedelics necessarily, but, like, I remember when they first came <laughs> into my life, okay. I was terrified to do them, but I wanted to do them. Uh-huh. And instead of, like, having a conversation with her about it, like, of course, I just went to the internet. Mm. It's so hard to, like, I think there's no hate on parents not preparing us for adulting because there's so much and, going like, on. Also, in- adulting isn't just yeah. doing <laughs> it, 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 <laughs> it's not just doing drugs and <laughs> drinking alcohol and soda. <laughs> but i think it's like i think it's hard because as an adult you're already going through so much so then when you add kids to it it's like now i gotta teach them how to be an adult too exactly. i don't even know how to be I don't an adult even know how to do it so it, like broaching a, a subject like psychedelics it's like well how am i supposed to know my damn kid wants to do psychedelics like <laughs> You know, Don't worry, I got in the bag for the for my for kids. the psychedelic queens. <laughs> <laughs> Send them to me. Um, no, yeah, that's true. I it's just like also like in the in the world of like adulting yourself. I think like you're like I think about our parents like they're ne- they're not even done adulting. Like they're not no, done you figuring never, out. Yeah. You never are. And so for them to have kids and then have to figure out how to teach them to adult, like <laughs> it's just like monkeys teaching monkeys. Which I mean, that's kind of also like stupid to say but like it's just like we're all just fucking trying to figure this shit out yeah no one knows exactly what to do like it's just it's yeah. silly yeah i will say i watched this one logan sent me this one's this woman's like instagram page and she like teaches her kids which i think there's like a level to like i i feel a little bit conflicted because i'm like these kids are also like kind of losing Coddled? the wonder oh. no losing like the wonder of of like being a child no okay, like what is a child so, okay sorry <laughs> i'm just guessing <laughs> um she basically like has nights with her kids where and she also like sells these i don't think she sells i think they're free like she makes mm. pdfs of like teaching kids about adulting things like for example like oh. car payments or like oh. rent um how to save for a house saving for a car like how old are we talking like one the, the youngest is eight i believe they're like eight ten thirteen and fifteen and i think she has like a three-year-old that like the, isn't in the conversation yeah but like i think a lot of it's like this is amazing and then sometimes i'm just like yeah the, the wonder of like being a child though is like kind of taken, taken away but i'm also like it's really cool to see like her teaching them and like teaching them the value of money because it's just and it's hilarious like mm-hmm. these kids are just so funny they're just like i think i saw her it was a little girl and she's like i'm broke already and i'm riding a bike yes yeah. yes i love her they're thinking like i'm not even like i remember the oldest like the, the boy he was like i'm having no kids like i can't even afford myself like how how am i gonna afford two kids mm-hmm. and he's like okay maybe i'll have one and then really really stretch it and like he was already thinking and it's just like I, for one like i think that that's really cool because it's gonna re- it's gonna create a really responsible like yeah kid. i'm not gonna have unsafe sex because exactly. i know how much it can cost the, re- the re- re- repercussions are there like you already know yeah. i feel like that is so especially because like the ch- the fucking school system does not teach children because it is the parents responsibility is everybody's claim you know but like that's what that's what everybody's claiming yeah i get that but it's also like those are simple finances like we all have to learn how to fucking pay bills mm-hmm. we all have to learn how to like save up money so why aren't we like teaching that from the start? You know what I mean? Like at least basics. Mm-hmm. We don't get we we don't learn any of that. I wonder when the right age is to start. I, I feel like it's I like, said like middle school. Yeah, like middle like eight to me seems a little eight's a little young for me. But I mean like they're I guess they're I don't know like the kids there. But then it's like, I don't know. But yeah, I see your point. Like it must have been nice to have all the information. And I doubt it's, like, stressing them out to the point where they're, like, oh, I can't, I can't live. live. Yeah. Like, what am I going to do? Some, also, the, the, that girl, the one that you're talking about, mm. she kept she kept joking, like, mom, I love you, but you better put me in the will. Like, when you <laughs> yeah. die, I'm going to go shopping at my mom, my dead mama's house. Like, I'm going to buy shit. And she's, it's just funny. Like, it's just, like, a real conversation, though, about, like, the stuff that you don't, like, I mean, as I you slowly start to realize like how much goes into just literally living Mm -hmm. but like you're thrown into it you don't you don't slowly like yeah you know what i mean like you have to figure it out i wish somebody told me more things and i'm like is that just part of the experience i think obviously but well like uh, like you're saying parents do things differently rightfully so whoever does whatever is their own thing but 
some parents set their kids up better, which in this case, maybe that's better. We don't know yet. We'll see when they get older, I guess. But they, some kids are more equipped or they get weaned off slower yeah. or some kids are just thrown into it. I feel like there is truly no like right, right or wrong. Yeah, that's totally true. Because everyone's different in terms of kid. I'm not... There's always, like, there is, I guess, a wrong way. Like, you can't, you shouldn't do certain things, right? For sure. Like, as a parent, if you can afford mentally, physically, emotionally, whatever, to do things, you shouldn't just throw your kids out onto the street or anything. So, yeah. I don't know. But in our case, I'm like, but adulting's hard. (laughs) Adulting is just, like, really gross. Like, I think in high school, genuinely, my thoughts were like, oh, I have to make doctor's appointments or, like set my own schedule or one day i'm gonna have kids one day I'm gonna have, it's like no babe it's much more than that like so much more than that oh god like, it's like I why f- couldn't i figure out who i am in high school <laughs> like why couldn't that have been my journey like i know exactly who i am what i want to do and who i want to be <laughs> oh, how easy that life like it would have been so much better without all the pressure to do that in high school which like maybe everyone was encouraging us to do those things and we were like <laughs> right all right babe i'm just trying to live <laughs> I'm just trying to be at the beach and have a boyfriend. <laughs> like, that was genuinely the thought. The bliss of being a kid and look back with fondness. And also, like, awful times. Because I think now that we're, like, you know, mid 20s, it's like I realize I miss the times of when I was, like, a kid, whatever. But, like, literally, you're the youngest you're ever going to be today, and you're going to miss today, too. Yeah. Like, 100%, I can see myself at 30 years old being like, God, I miss when I was 25. I had no idea what I wanted to do. How cool was that? Like, like it was so cool to not be just stuck in this job or at, or know exactly what I wanted to do because I knew... Like, you know, there's just things you forget when you get older. Because, like, even in high school, I'm sure I hated things. Yeah, I was going to ask you, like, were you the type of kid who, like, couldn't wait to grow up? Mm, probably not. Or were you the type <laughs> of kid that wanted to stay a kid? Because oh. you know there's like a different... Like I mean, different I don't think I was either. Hmm. I think in, there was ways that I wanted to be like treated like an adult, quote unquote. Like, I should be able to do this or like whatever. But in general, I You said, but give me your coin. Yeah, but give me that <laughs> coin. Like, I really... I loved having freedom, but I wasn't like... Maybe just because of my situation. Like, with my parents, I wasn't to the point where I was like, I need to get out of this place. Yeah. So, I don't know. Were you, like, itching to leave? You wanted to be an adult? I didn't even... I think, like, when I thought about it, it wasn't, like, necessarily, like, leaving my house, like, my Mm. my parents' home. I think it was just, like, I really wanted to be an adult. And I think that... What did that mean to you at the time? (laughs) I think it meant, like, making my own decisions and, like... (laughs) Everything we hate about (laughs) adulting. (laughs) Literally, everything I hate about adulting. (laughs) Like, having my own car. Mm. Like just being able to yeah like have my own space making my own life like no one can tell you you can and cannot do yeah and I think part of that was based a little bit on trauma on like how I had to grow up quickly and like I just like I was like already feeling like I'm doing it I'm mentally so much more equipped than you guys like you guys are making me do a lot of like emotional work for you yet you're treating me like a child that doesn't Mm. know anything. And I think that was really conflicting for me. But at the same time, I knew nothing. So it's like, (laughs) but I was, but I still like believe that I grew up a little too fast because of that stuff, you know? And like, I think I grew maturity to a a sense that it maybe wasn't necessarily, like, it's great that I'm a mature individual now, Mm -hmm. but I do feel that it wasn't necessary. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm grateful for it, but it wasn't necessary. Yeah. So I think that's where I kind of come from. At the same time, though, I really enjoyed, like, the luxury of being a child and, like... Who doesn't? Who didn't? Who, you know? who doesn't want to be a kid again? And that's like, I would literally happen. I would literally sign my life away again to be 17 for 17 again. Like, that movie, the movie is going to hit so different now. I need... I haven't watched any years. It's been a while. 17, 17. again is... And then we're going to wow. be like, actually, I never, I don't want to go back. <laughs> I was just kidding. I actually just hate it there. Kidding. But it, that movie, wow, it really. Or like the one with um, Tia and Tamara where they turn, she turns into her, like her grandma, her grandma turns into her. No. I've never seen that. I forgot what it's called. But it's I've like. I've seen it. I don't remember which twin, but one of them is like, like the granddaughter. 
and the other one like is the grandma as a young like Tia or Tamara like the young version of the grandma like they look like basically saying like I look just like my grandmother when uh, I was little oh I don't think I singer. saw it though it's so good Forgot is it Disney? it's like the brother is like this like inventor like the little brother he invents shit and he invented a bar of soap that like would turn a dog back into a puppy girl what in and the- so like the the gram the grandpa and the grandma who like use the soap aren't together anymore use the soap again like they use the soap i'm sorry not again they yeah, use yeah, the soap yeah. they turned like 17 like they're in high school and it's tia and, it, one and it, yeah it's one of them and the they fall in love again like in high school like they have to go back to high oh school oh my god it's just like it's 17 again but like about love i mean it's i guess it was like, about love too but i think everyone given the opportunity maybe not that's a bold statement but i think a lot of people given the opportunity to go back to 17 with the knowledge you have now would be crazy like you would do it but you wouldn't actually do it like if i had to actually relive sense. 17 to 26 it wouldn't make sense i'd be like this is wrong like i feel like a predator painful. this is weird like i'm actually 26 up here yeah i don't know yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't actually but the thought is cute like if i could just for a moment like raven simone to my 17 year old brain for a sec just be like hey girl you're doing good like i wish i could like i could just actually relive the moments not like oh, you wouldn't know like, that you were reliving it like, yeah, yeah 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 like sit <laughs> sit passenger seat just watch if someone makes this a movie you fucking stole it <laughs> you stole it from us yeah i don't know there's just something so sacred about being the age you are and then we don't actually care <laughs> we're like yeah whatever today sucks like i hate where i'm at right now nothing's perfect nothing's great and then you look back and you're like holy shit everything was like amazing then (laughs) yeah and like even the stuff that stresses me out like so currently my big adulting thing right now is i have to figure out what i'm doing with my car because my lease is up i've already extended it a fucking year and i'm just like fed up i haven't even done anything i'm like i don't want to do it (laughs) like i really just don't want to figure it out i know i'm going to and it's just like uh, like i know my dad's gonna help me and like it's not gonna be this big daunting process but i'm also like yeah do i really do i really do this like do i have like the the easy option is to just keep my car but i'm not gonna do that even though i love her i do love her but like i got too much money in that car to not use it to not use it and then i'm getting kicked off my insurance my mom's insurance because i'm gonna be 26 in august (laughs) so it's a shit show dude but it's like also okay being 26 right you get kicked off your insurance your parents insurance i feel like for one not even everyone goes to 26 some people get kicked off at 18 because their parents or their parents don't have jobs that have insurance either so they don't have insurance from their parents regardless so, like, not to say, like, be grateful for what you have, because that sentiment is always just like, okay, well, people's situations are what they are. But it's like everyone at different stages of life are going through something hard, whether it's like getting kicked off your parents' insurance or having to find a new job or you're buying a house or you're losing your house or you're filing for bankruptcy. You're getting fucking, dude. <laughs> you know, followed by the IRS, like, whatever it is. Uh-huh. I know, like, I can't even. There's just so much. And, like, it's so daunting. But at the end of the day, it, it feels very comforting to know, like, it's not the end of the world, you know? Yeah. And most of the times, the things that I'm, like, worried about or stressed about are kind of a luxury, you know? Like, in a weird way. Like, like getting kicked get- off my parents' insurance is weirdly a luxury. <laughs> like, at least I had insurance all these years. I could be worse off. At least I can probably afford to pay for my own health insurance for the time being if I wanted to i don't know if i do i haven't even decided like making those decisions are annoying and stressful but like technically kind of a luxury like i have to make all these doctor's appointments before i get kicked off yeah it's annoying but it's nice that i get to do it it. that's fucking true so it's like all about perspective and that's when i'm like okay bitch shut up and then i also think about my own adulting shit like when we were dealing with the irs a lot even though we still kind of are but (laughs) from afar (laughs) um I just remember being so affected by it and like sad on days where things were hard and just being like, 
Like it's gonna like, be it's, it's gonna fine. be fine. It's just yeah. money. It yeah, like it was it's fine. It doesn't feel that way though. In it the does moment. not. And it's just it, it in the moment it feels really, really strong. But I think it's just genuinely because we're it's like a learning moment of like this is right, this is wrong, or like this is just the way that this outcome happens. And like it's so uncomfortable to not know if you're gonna be okay. If you're gonna be okay. <laughs> Literally. But you will be. Like it's honestly even if you're in so much fucking debt like you can file bankruptcy babe you're still living i don't know what that looks like but you can do it people do it all the time don't ask me for advice i don't know shit i said file for bankruptcy rack up your credit card debt <laughs> just kidding don't do that have you seen the um the tiktok that was like saying it's it stated something like it was like someone once said like being an adult and learning to be an adult it's like you start a whole new age like not necessarily like 25 or whatever but like Mm. after the year like when you're 20 or I think it says it said like after 22 that's when you really start to develop like real adult living and so they were saying like I mean maybe that's different for everybody but they were saying like and every year after that that's how old you are an adult so like we would be six in adult years or whatever so like or even like let's say it started at 20 years old that's when you're a real adult okay we'd be eight we don't fucking know shit at eight Wait, years old eight. like you start 20? you start being one years old again in wouldn't adult be, life wouldn't we be six i said if we did 20 though oh i see what you're saying six where did i think i don't know oh, i was, I, confused. Think it was eight, I was 18? thinking 18 and 20 okay yeah, yeah we would be six so okay. like we know nothing at fucking six years old but man even some of those 10 year olds <laughs> some of those girl some of those 20 year olds <laughs> adults they don't know nothing well like, i guess when do you know everything at 40 40 years adult so 60 probably. years old that makes sense to me though and my dad knows quite a bit <laughs> that man's 60 and that's what i'm saying i think like i think that part's true like it's a whole new like learning experience and whole new life of like having to learn a whole new set of rules i think from like ages or whatever when you're born to when you're 18 20 mm-hmm. you're literally just figuring yourself out learning like how to walk talk how to be a person and then after that it's like the societal stuff that you need to figure out and how you fit in mm-hmm. in those types of areas you make a difference in the world giving some disney channel shit <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know it's like i'm grateful to be an adult truly but (laughs) but a huge but it's just like at 17 i wished so much to be able to just like pick up and leave and do whatever i wanted and not have to tell anyone anything it's all i wanted right you know you do that you're like oh i gotta pay for my meal i gotta gotta, pay for my gas exactly i gotta i gotta tell people where i'm at so that i'm okay (laughs) i gotta bring something because i'm not gonna be that person who doesn't bring something you know it's like all these layers which like aren't necessarily bad and and we're making it kind of sound like don't do anything because being an adult sucks but just like it's just you don't think about it as a kid yeah and especially if you don't have maybe role models uh or good role models it's even harder i feel like you probably are just kind of like "Mm, what are we doing here like what's going on yeah i find myself not that like there aren't some good role models in my life but I find myself like figuring out adulting among other like other my other peers like Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm learning alongside them and it's more of like we're teaching each other about things versus like having an older figure really teach Mm -hmm. us about like that's how I I feel like that's my experience of it and I feel like a lot of people's especially in our generation I don't know what it is but I think it's just because like we're trying to I'm sure it was like that for our parents too maybe but like mm-hmm. i think we are we're having such a different like shift in mindset as a generation and so it's becoming more of like let's figure this out together versus like let's learn from our mm-hmm. elders i mean i think in general probably every generation to a degree you know like it's always Feels like we want to be way. better than the yeah. last one or whatever so i think yeah there's like a grain of salt by taking from each like your parents advice and then your peers advice because sometimes we're just naive like our peers were we haven't gone through it or yeah we don't fully understand or the way adults above us our elders do right which right. is so annoying to hear and like i just got told that the other day like i don't want to come off this way but like you just you haven't been married yet or like whatever and i'm like 
obviously like (laughs) (laughs) yeah bitch I know I'm not married and I understand basic concepts though it's not like it's not fucking rocket science it's not and then we're there we're like okay maybe this is is like rocket rocket science science. (laughs) yeah and like I get that and it, it does come off this way of like well you haven't experienced that yet but also kind of like it comes off in a way of like well I have and you lack you know mm, yeah but it's sometimes it's better to be the person that's lacking that experience like yeah okay like, yeah and i'm single of, yeah like i don't necessarily want to experience that right <laughs> like now. i'm cool having no knowledge of what that looks like yet it, which not to say that people say it with those intentions like to be like no, oh yeah i have this and you don't but like inside kind of reflect on like why it bugs you when somebody has that over you like it's not I feel like lately when whenever something like that is said to me I'm just like you're probably just saying this out of whatever experience you're having it has Mm -hmm. nothing to do with me and like you might be right you might be wrong I don't and it's not up to me like I Mm -hmm. it will happen I will figure it out when it happens to me like I don't I don't really care to harp on the fact that I do or don't know at the moment and I'm sure we say it to people younger than us like yeah talking to my niece and nephew i'm sure i'm like yeah whatever (laughs) you guys you guys haven't been there yet or whatever and it's just part of the experience i guess to like have everyone fucking older than you have some shit to say (sighs) which is like all in you know they're trying to help i guess they're trying to save us some heartache heartache but listen i gotta do it myself gotta go my own way (laughs) the way disney (laughs) has a grip on me and like how like I constantly like constantly use it as a tool to remind myself that adulting is gonna be okay Mm -hmm. um what was I watching the other day that I was like oh my god oh I was watching Encanto again (laughs) and that was adulting's gonna be okay partly which part it was just like I mean like all of it but like all of it like that movie you can dissect it in so many ways yeah it's just crazy each character has their own But, like, generational trauma and, like, thinking about, like, trying to find purpose. And, I mean, if you haven't seen it, I'm probably going to, like, ruin stuff. But if you haven't seen it, it's been a few years, so (laughs) I don't feel bad. Like, how the grandma, like, abuela was, like, so, like, hard on, like, when you're first watching it, you're just, like, she's really hard on on Maribel. Mm -hmm. But then you're, like wait she's hard on everyone like everyone has to be perfect around her and Mm -hmm. like it's because of how she wants to like structurally just keep the family strong because she went through so much i don't know this is like like the pressure the pressure yeah but it's like the pressure is so crazy and like i was just thinking about like the roles each person played in that movie and i was just like this is too much like i was thinking about the oldest sister who's like literally carrying all the weight and how that tends Mm -hmm. to really be true and in nature of like the, the older the eldest or kid. sibling usually carries the most weight whether or not like they try to like i feel like it just happens because you just feel like oldest. i'm the oldest or I could, yeah. i'm not the oldest but i could see how and then like the is. middle child either i think i think we have said this before like turns into like either the fuck up or like the perfect child like i feel like the middle child is always like the polarizing one where like they're either too scared to fuck up or they're so like anti like i don't want to be perfect like you that they like go the other way i don't want to be like i don't want to be like you yeah yeah and then it's like the youngest usually tends to be like mediator and tries to figure out best ways for this family to function and then you're like i just i literally sat there and i was like whoa (laughs) like you know and just trying to figure out like it's just like how each person has their own emotional like stakes in the game and like how that all affects each other and everyone thinks that theirs is like the hardest yeah the most important it's like yeah babe we're working like a puzzle (laughs) we're all doing it we're all here (laughs) we are cogs in this machine whether you like it or not i think the the faster you realize like i think that's a big also big part of adulting is like realizing that your elders or your parents are people too with Mm -hmm. like real people struggles that they're not just like beings in your life it gets real once you start to really like navigate life with those kinds of lenses of they're just people they're trying to figure themselves out it tends to get a little bit i don't want to say easier but it's just like there's more understanding there Mm -hmm. i think well we had the whole episode on family yeah like a long time ago we were still on that blue couch (laughs) (laughs) if you haven't listened to it maybe go take a listen i don't know i haven't listened to it (laughs) but yeah we talked about that concept of being like okay what the fuck everyone in our family even 
siblings are just people and growing up you have like this idea of who they are and I guess you put them in a box unintentionally like you're this way and that's who you are that's the role you serve serve. in my life and our lives but then you realize like oh my god like wait you kind of fucked up here you're kind of amazing at this or I don't know whatever you can decipher your whole family but it's just kind of shitty too when you (laughs) are just like we're all adults and we're all trying to figure it out and then like there's this perception thing that comes in of being an adult of like even your family perceiving you now because you're an adult and you're supposed to have everything together but then also society yeah but it's like coming to the thanksgiving thing it's like oh my god where's your boyfriend or where's your girlfriend or where's your you're not married yet or you haven't had kids yet you guys got married last year like or you know yeah i i think we should talk about this more like within like the 26 episode episode like turning 26 but you think of yourself as like 25 or under you're like yeah i'm an adult i guess but like no one else really like they're like oh my god you're so young like it's so fine you're so young Mm -hmm. once it's past like the 25 mark it's like you're 26 27 28 29 you're no no longer like really passing that that characteristic of like you're just a kid like in an adult body like you're i feel like you say that but i still feel like people will be like you're so young but it's like, like, that's like kind people, like people who like are like self-reflective and probably like really. So thinking. you mean just like just like assholes. a general, <laughs> just like a general sense. I feel like you're seen as a real adult mm. in the later 20s. And it's just like, why? Why does that shift with one year or another? Like, mm. I don't feel all that super different. I think there's also like sometimes I still think I'm 23 and I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, my God, I wish. <laughs> 23 was a weird, weird year. Really weird year. But I think. I see what you're saying, and I don't disagree that the shift from 25 to 26 will be more, like, even older, because it's the second half, like, you're closer to 30 than you are 20. Yeah. So there will definitely be that shift, and, like, I just want to say, I don't think people who love you, obviously, or just people in general perceiving you, don't look at you and be like, you're 26, you should have it all together, because they're probably 35, and they're like, I ain't got shit together either, you know? So I think there's also that, like, this pressure we put on ourselves even like oh my god 30 means like i'm supposed to have it figured out for whatever fucking reason we've all decided as a society that 30 is like the number the number that's when you're supposed to be married that's when you're supposed to find the love of your life you're supposed to know who you are what you want to do well i think about how we even like in the last episode we talked about how like you had a plan to be Mm. like married and have kids by like 28 right yeah yeah it's just like why did you choose that number to be an adult because 30 was but that's what I I was like I'm gonna be early bitch I'm not gonna wait till 30 (laughs) I'm gonna be my mom I feel like even then that's like a depiction of like just societally how like we view like the later 20s like I feel like 27 is seen like as such a and I'm I'm saying this because I'm like that that's the next year for me but like 27 is just seen as like a you should probably have some things figured out and it's like girl you're telling me in a year i gotta i gotta really like put it together and plan there's also something we don't acknowledge in others is like how much healing someone's done no absolutely that is like it is like all right and like good for you like you know as a good society we're you. Like, are you making money though yeah literally are you do you have a job are you living a healthy life sure <sighs> i don't give a fuck you need to be working till 10 p.m every day you know there's that whole it really thing. just come, comes down to all that but yeah and but like the timeline the, thing is like people at 20 figure out what they want to do for the rest of their lives yeah but i think it but those people are like rarities versus that's like when saying. you turn 27 everyone looks at you of like you're no longer young anymore <laughs> you're like a person who should have shit figured out like you can't have the excuse of i think that's how you feel though I mean, I agree that's the pressure that's out there. I don't think so. I don't think it's a I feel. I think it's a genuine, like, response to aging. And, like, I think, but, like, with that said, I feel like that's how society has, like, worked. But everyone who turns 30 or 32, they're still, like, I feel behind because of that same, that same note. You know what I'm saying? I think, so I think that's why I'm saying, I think as our generation we're less inclined to think those that way. things. No, for yeah. sure. So, like, if I were to ask my sister-in-law, she probably is going to be like, I hate you, you, you're young. She's probably going to think I'm young forever. Like, even when I'm 50, she's going to be like, well, whatever, I'm 60, so I hate you. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know? So, like, I think there's always going to be that perspective of, like, 
Also, other people can look outwardly into you and For see sure. like the things that you have done or For whatever. Sure. So yeah, no, but the pressure inside is like, I like think- we're supposed to be buying houses and having kids and having our dream jobs mm-hmm. and making so much money we don't know what to do with we're supposed to be retiring our parents like there's just it's there's like so social media factors. showing us what other people are doing that's a whole other yeah and it's like it all. how am i supposed to compete with that <laughs> like we're not it's genuinely so we're not supposed to compete with that yeah what was i listening to i think it was um the armchair expert he was talking about how social media like it used to be we had a group of people and there was one good doctor there was one person that was good at gathering there was one person that was good at whatever it was building you know there was just one person who was the best at that one thing but now it's like there's hundreds of people that are really good at that thing and we compare all of them also not even just good at one thing they're good at like oh yeah good at multiple things because now we have the availability to do whatever so much pressure yeah yeah i think a good (laughs) a good film for somebody to watch who's feeling all these feelings um i recently watched francis ha Mm. If you haven't seen it, you should watch it. Definitely a good, like, coming-of-age story. Um, She's 27, and I think that that's kind of also why, like, I picked that age because I feel like at that age, it's such a – like, it's such a specific feeling of, like, feeling in between both – because, like, when you think of 28, it's, like, so much closer to 30, and then you think of 26, and you're like, okay, but you're still on the other – like, you could be on the other line, you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? But 27 is so in the middle – and in that film, you just, like, see Francis just really struggling with, like, feeling immature, but, like, also seeing, like, her best friend getting engaged, getting oh God, married. It's, like bridesmaids. it's Yeah, exactly. It's just, like, but they're much older in that movie. But <laughs> in <Even> Francis <laughs> Hall, like, it's just, you could really see, like, the, that concept of, like, you have to be an adult now. Yeah. Figure and it's, it out. It's, like... And everyone sees her as a fucking weirdo because of it. Because, like, mm-hmm. she doesn't want she to grow She doesn't up. do all that, yeah. I feel like being part of weddings when I was younger was, like, so much easier. Because I was like, oh, none of the responsibility is on me. Like, my mm-hmm. mom's paying for my dress. My mom's paying for whatever. But then you, like, grow up and then it's like, oh, you can't afford to do it. Oh, that's a big thing. You know? And it's like, <sighs> like, even if people, like maybe you perceive like let's say you ask the bridesmaid or whatever you perceive they can afford to do it or whatever but they are prioritizing some goal right like buying a house in europe i have no fucking idea right <laughs> maybe that is a bit much but whatever it is buying a vacation house i don't know but you perceive that they can afford to and then like you know what i mean like okay i'm like leaving the the personal feeling of adulting and like the perceived feeling of other people adulting like mm-hmm. i perceive that you should be doing it differently right like you have these ideas of like well they could have done it if they had just done this or but it's like why and like sometimes i'll catch myself like in a moment of like i mean they could have but then i'm like but whatever no i do that a lot yeah like where i'm like oh they could have been here for this moment if they just like (laughs) if they just like didn't do that other thing that they wanted to do that they prioritize when it's just like it's not it's none of your business you know but like, that's so true. As an adult, you get to prioritize what you want. But I will say sometimes I'm just mm. like, for real. I mean, there are some things where it's like, okay, you could have not bailed on that. Why do we do that? I it's so know. hard. I mean, it's because we're like, we're adults too, bitch. We're on the same level. Don't don't make your struggles, My struggles. more important than mine. Yeah, or mine now instead of just yours. But like also, I'm just such like a both sides person. I'm like, but like they're going through Dude. something. And then this is how I get taken advantage of. <laughs> and this is why (laughs) and this is why i have to be really careful but yeah adulting is hard and we see you guys and there's nothing like it (laughs) (laughs) but like we're so blessed to be adulting and doing things we want we have the availability to be whoever we want and the autonomy is fucking terrifying but it's also kind of cool yeah and you're not doing a bad job at it so yeah and i also feel like I do miss the days of being like, my mom said I can't go. Can't yeah, that's not that an excuse anymore. <laughs> I can't say that anymore. Yeah. I mean, I always wanted to go, though, so. So never was a thing. It was never a now thing Now I don't want to but, yeah. but I don't want to say that I can't go or won't go. I'm like, you know, my mom actually said I can't. <laughs> now it's the, like, actually, I told my mom I would hang out with her, so, like, 
you know you know how that is i don't want to make uh, her feel bad you know how it is like moms <laughs> like she just really is so needy. she's really going through something right now Anyways, dude i'm not gonna get into it that's her business Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but uh, hopefully you guys aren't struggling too hard if you are we're, we're all gonna get through it it's we're gonna miss the days that we were sh- so confused i think but like it's hard to like have that mindset but like think about all the people who really like are in their 40s and 50s and they're like i if i could be 20 again mm-hmm. and be struggling and yeah. like living on the edge like that i would mm-hmm. like, there's so much so many good things about the age you are today whether you are 50 or 70 there's so many great things like my fucking uncle just retired and i'm like that's fucking that's so sick <laughs> I don't have to work no more. <laughs> like, come on. There's great things about every phase of your life. And I think also, let's just normalize the whole adulting thing for our generation that we don't have to be like mega millionaires and come up with this great next business idea or be like the most popular person on the fucking planet to be successful. I'm on that. I'm on that uh, Euro life <laughs> vibe. <laughs> Getting Italian summer, but in California forever. Italian lifestyle, <laughs> uh, La Dolce Vita, as no. as Courtney likes to no, say. No, as Kim would steal. Oh, oh no! <laughs> anyway, that's the life I'm trying to live. Yeah. Chill as fuck. So, anyway, again, you're not doing a terrible job at adulting. It's just fucking hard, and you're not yeah. alone. It's only gonna get better. I think. Mm-hmm. I hope <laughs> you're giving giving yourself the tools to make it better i hope well if this Mm. if this hit home at all please let us know interact with us because we love to chat (laughs) we clearly like talking so (laughs) um but yeah that's gonna be it for this episode we will catch you guys next week Mm -hmm. um yeah thank you for listening thank you for watching we'll see you next time Bye. bye